Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Nausea in pregnancy is a common problem affecting up to 80% of pregnant women. And the physiological reason behind this condition is increased human gonadotrophin level in pregnancy. Severe nausea and vomiting occurs in 30% of the pregnant women and it can cause significant morbidity if left untreated. So hello everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel, Obstetric and Gynecology, the channel which is committed to excellence in delivering the best knowledge in this speciality in line with the evidence-based authentic sources and research-based guidelines of obstetric and gynecology all over the world. So I would like you to subscribe our channel so that you don't miss out any informative video related to the topic of obstetric and gynecology. So coming to our main topic of discussion of today which is excessive vomiting management in pregnancy. So before before discussing uh, the detailed management, I would like to tell you something about hyper MSS gravidarum. The Royal College of Obstetric and Gynecology guidelines says that when there is protracted nausea and vomiting of pregnancy with a triad of more than 5% of pre-pregnancy weight loss and dehydration along with electrolyte imbalance, that is called hyper MSS gravidarum. Okay, so for the diagnosis of hyperemesis gra gravidarum, these all criteria must be fulfilled and it's very important because this criteria defines whether the patient needs to be admitted or we can treat her on outpatient basis. So how to manage excessive vomiting? RCOG guideline encourages the conservative management, dietary changes and lifestyle modification in the management of excessive vomiting in pregnancy. A woman is advised to take frequent small meals and avoid spicy foods. So by taking references from RCOG, uh, I will explain the management of nausea and vomiting in pregnancy in three lines basically. First of all, herbal treatment. Secondly, pharmacological management. And thirdly, uh, with the use of certain complementary therapies like hypnosis, acupuncture, etc. First of all, ginger. Ginger may be used by women wishing to avoid anti um therapies in mild to moderate nausea and vomiting of pregnancy. So encourage ginger tea with a lemon. Now, Chinese folk medicine has relied on fennel seeds as an anti uh, nausea remedy for centuries so tell your patient whether you crush a tablespoon or steep them in boiling water to make a tea or chew on a handful whenever you're feeling crazy this might help reduce your urge to burn avocados are full of vitamin c and vitamin b6 which can alleviate the symptoms of morning sickness and help the body better absorb the vitamins found in the fruits and vegetables. Now, without pharmacological agents, the problem of excessive vomiting cannot be solved completely. There are safety and efficacy data for first-line antiemetics and they should be prescribed when required for nausea and vomiting of pregnancy and hyperemesis gravidarum. So, the first-line antiemetics include, first of all, cyclizine, 50 mg oral tablet, taken per orally IM or IV route 8 hourly, means 3 times per day. Next come prochlorpyrazine, 5 to 10 mg, 6 to 8 hourly per oral. And if you want the IM or IV route, we give 12.5 mg, 8 hourly. And in a per-rectal route as well, it can be given in the dose of 25 mg daily. Next come promethazine. 12.5 to 25 milligram, 4 to 8 hourly per oral, IM, IV or per rectal dose. Next is chlorpromazine, 10 to 25 milligram, 4 to 6 hourly per oral, IV or IM or 50 to 100 milligram, 6 to 8 hourly per rectally. The second line drugs include metoglopramide, 5 to 10 milligram, 8 hourly, per oral IV, IM, maximum 5 days duration. Domperidone, 
10 milligram 8 hourly per oral 30 to 60 milligram 8 hourly per rectal on citron 4 to 8 milligram 6 to 8 hourly per oral or 8 milligram over 15 minutes 12 hourly IV. We move to the third line agent when the first two lines do not work. Like in third line agent, we have corticosteroids, hydrocortisone, 100 milligram twice daily IV. And once the clinical improvement occurs, convert to prednisolone 40 to 50 milligram daily per oral with the dose gradually tapered until lowest maintenance dose that control the symptoms is reached. Next come the role of complementary therapy, which include acustimulation and hypnosis, etc. The acustimulation include acupressor and acupuncture. And women may be reassured that acustimulation are safe in pregnancy. Even the NICE guideline says that these therapies can be used. So acupressor may improve nausea and vomiting of pregnancy. So what is acupressor? Acupressor is basically a non-invasive technique which relieves the specific problem by uh, diffusing your energy or by proper massage technique uh, as it's traditionally known as um, Chinese medical technique in which basically the touch and prefer the touch and pressure sensations are used for relieving the symptoms next come the acupuncture technique uh, which uses the fine needles which are basically inserted uh, in the skin at specific points along what are considered to be the line of energy also called meridians and it is used in the treatment of various physical and mental conditions so for the nausea and vomiting also this technique has traditionally been used now hypnosis hypnosis also referred to as the hypnotherapy or hypnotic suggestion is a trance-like state in which you have heightened focus and concentration hypnosis is usually done with the help of therapist using verbal repetition and mental images or by using other techniques but rcog guideline clearly says that hypnotic therapy should not be recommended to manage nausea and vomiting pregnancy and hyper emesis gravidarum okay so it's not recommended so by now i have told you the different lines of management of nausea and vomiting of pregnancy but it's very important to note that we need to do the complete evaluation of the patient according to the set criteria of RCOG. We need to assess the patient in a proper way and decide first of all whether the patient uh, who is complaining of nausea and vomiting needs the hospital admission or not. And that decision uh, is based upon the RCOG scoring system. If you want to study the detail, check the link in the description or in the i button in the right upper corner of this video you can find the link of that video which shows the detailed account of um, rcg guideline about uh, the management of hyperemesis gravity